And there he is. What's up? What's up? Mr. Brent Smith from Shine Down and Smith Myers. Hello, handsome. Look at this sexiness, man. Holy moly. That, my friend, is that's that's special on a this lot of This is what happens with the lack of live music. I've had nothing else to sink my teeth into, so I figure why not get hairier? Well, not only that though, but I like this is like this is art. You're like taking this very, very seriously. I'm into it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Looks good on you. Good to see you, man. Very happy to see you. It's, it's been some time since we had a chance to chat, man. How's everything in your world? Everything's good, man. Solid. I mean, ultimately, there's a lot going on. Uh, to say that I'm keeping myself busy would be an understatement. But, um, you know, my biggest focus with everything that's going on in the world right now, man, is, you know, focusing on tomorrow and doing what we need to do today to get to that tomorrow. Uh, to be bigger and better and brighter and more knowledgeable about everything that's going on. But I don't spend a lot of time, you know, kind of, uh, I'm definitely not twiddling my thumbs, man. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be done. Um, so got to get after it. So I'm trying to be, from a mental standpoint and a physical standpoint, just trying to be optimistic, stay positive. But uh, also I'm getting after it, man. You got to stay busy during these times. Yeah, for a world that's been on lockdown for the last number of months, you've kind of been all over the place. Florida, South Carolina, out in Malibu. Where's Mr. Nomad at today? So I, um, I'm in, I've been going through, I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. Me and Eric are uh, in the preliminary phase of kind of just getting all of our thoughts together for the beginning of Shinedown 7, because we're starting the writing process for that. And really that's... Um, that's taken a lot of time just because we've been sitting with each other, not just me and Eric, but, you know, also Barry and Zach, just really trying to focus on what do we want to say with this next album? Because some people are, I think a lot of musicians right now, people that are in the studio, they're asking themselves, well, do you make a quarantine record or a COVID-19 record? Because the goal of all of this that's going on right now, we want to get you know, past this. We want to learn from it and be educated, but we want to move on with life. And, you know, are we going to be talking about the same thing a year from now? Um, I don't believe that we will be talking about the same thing a year from now. I think that life will move forward. So before we even get into the first drum beat, the first lick on a guitar, you know, the first vocal, we're really trying to just ask the question, what do we want to convey now? Where do we want to go now? Okay. And of course, we're talking about Smith and Myers here. This is where the now is because we're getting geared up for the Smith and Myers live in drive in concert series, the MMR concert event here in Philadelphia. It's going to be right outside in the parking lot of Citizens Bank Park. Is this going to be the first show back for you guys since all of this craziness has started? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that we just released um, our Live in London. That was the last show that we did last year in December with our friends in the Raven Age and Alter Bridge. So that got put out finally. It took us a while to get it all ready to go for everybody. But this was always a creative year for us. We were, we had to push back the, the goal of doing the deep dive tour because by the third time we were going to have to reschedule, we were just like, you know what? All the VIPs were sold, all the shows were sold out. Let's give the money back and we'll reconvene later on. But this entire year we started, I, I arrived in, yeah, this will be the first show. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> answer your question. Yes, this will be the first show. But the thing about it is, is that this Smith and Myers project is, was quite an undertaking because it's a two album, um, it's a two album record, it's two volumes. So there's 20 songs all together. There's 10 brand new covers that we've really, they're reimagining more than anything of these songs. But then for the very first time ever, it's 10 uh, original songs that me and Zach wrote. And, uh, you know, we really look at this as the first Smith & Myers album, even though if you go back to 2014 when we did it, that was, um, you know, something fun for the fan base. And we called it Smith and Myers because they were cover songs. Uh, never really thought that we would ever get to this place where we were going to take this to the level that we're going to go with this. Um, but I'm jazzed, man, because I just think that people are going to be really, I think, hopefully it 
it kind of stuns people in a good way. The idea that it's shine down, I think, is something that people think that, oh, it's going to be shine down acoustic. It's not that. If that's what you're looking for, it's not going to be that. It's a completely different animal. Take me back to the conversation that got the ball rolling with SM2. Um, I think more than anything was, well, the conversation came after we, in 2017, me and Zach went out, we did 22 shows as Smith and Myers. Uh, and I did it for Zach because I didn't necessarily know if it was, I didn't think people were going to show up, to be honest with you. Um, and that's not what happened. People showed up. And so obviously what we were doing with Shine Down and Attention Attention, we were in the midst of creating that and that was getting ready to come out. But I think we were in the middle of the album cycle for Attention Attention. So probably like the back half of 2018 and me and him discussed if we were going to do it and we were going to do an album um, that we should really go after it. And yes, it's about a vocal and a guitar or a vocal and a piano. It's the accompaniment of just a vocal and one instrument. But my whole thing was that we're not going to add any other players to this. It's just me and Zach, but we wanted to really kind of open the landscape sonically to it and not make it, um, we wanted it to be able to be organically consumed with a totally different mindset from people. And a lot of that has to do with the way it sounds, how we've chosen to present these songs and how we've chosen to lay it all out. The biggest thing was if we were going to do it, we wanted to make sure that we were going to make it 100% authentic. Um, so really by the time the beginning of 2019 had, had arrived last year, we basically said we'd started floating the idea out and then i think we were on i want to say we were on i think it was music choice we were doing a huge interview with them and i just blurted it out i just said yeah we're actually going to do a smith and myers record uh for uh for for 2020 oh and by the way it's going to be a double album too and zach was like looking at me and going huh and then that's where he basically just said you know pointing at me going, this man is the king of just saying stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the whole thing. I think a lot of it was kind of that interview where I just basically blurted it out because we didn't even know we were going to do a double album. But I said, hey, man, you got to put it out into the universe to make it real. Sometimes you have to just will it to happen. Sure. Uh, so this was the, the, the recording process start out in Malibu pre-pandemic. Was everything recorded this year? Yeah. Uh, okay. So... Got to Los Angeles in January of this year and started doing other elements in regards to the attention, attention film that's going to be coming soon. Um, but yeah, was getting everything ready to go with the project with Smith and Myers. The other thing too, our videographer Sanjay, he was there during the entire process of recording both volumes of Smith and Myers. So not only was he there during the entire time that we were working out these covers, and kind of figuring out how we wanted to do them. He was also there during the entire process of writing all of the 10 new songs and all that material. I think he's got close to seven terabytes worth of footage. Wow. So it's a lot to go through, but we wanted to film the entire process for the public and show them how it was actually done. Um, so yeah, and it ultimately we started work in the beginning of February we were about four weeks into it and um, right, right around the time that the announcement of this virus that nobody really understood what was going on, we weren't looking at media. Like we weren't looking at press. We weren't on our phones very much at all while we were making this record. But I remember the Friday, we were four weeks in, Zach was going to leave to go to Memphis, go back home for a couple of weeks, then come back and finish it. We had three songs left to write. We had 17 done, but we had three more songs from the original side that we needed to write. And then that's when um, we found out through our producer, Dave Bassett, he, he just kind of looked a little different on this Friday morning and we were like, what's wrong? And he said, they just canceled South by Southwest. And I was like, what? And that's kind of like when I opened up my phone and I kind of saw what was going on. So. The biggest thing was making sure that Zach could get out of California. Our producer, Dave, 
went to Hawaii because he was doing some kind of a real estate thing down there. But he left for Hawaii, Zach left for Memphis, and then I quarantined for 17 weeks. <laughs> and then so, you know, because Dave was in Hawaii, they wouldn't let him off the island. So it was 12 weeks before he was even able to get back to California for us to kind of reconvene and look at everything. So it's been a wild journey, man. So Smith and Myers won the initial record was a digital only release. Is this going to get a physical release? S and M two. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's, I can't give too much away. I can tell everybody from this interview with my dear friend, um, you're 10 days away from all the announcements. Good. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, man, we went, we went really, really hardcore into the physical aspect of this project too so there's definitely going to be things that you're going to be able to hold there's a lot of artistry that we put into this it was really quite a fun project to be involved in because it's i don't want to call it old school or throwback to like the days of like getting a record opening it up and like just going through this experience but to be totally honest with you even with generation z and the new generation it's interesting to see how people look at the way they consume music. I mean, obviously streaming is just a part of life, but the fact of the matter is, is we really wanted to give people an experience with this project and that's exactly what we've done. So in 10 days, you're gonna see and hear all the, you know, all the work that we've done to, to make this something really special for people. And hopefully everybody feels that way, but it's, yeah, it's got a lot of cool things that we're getting ready to announce with it. Sweet. And with s and one you had a music video for every song over the course of the project. Is that similar for this one as well? Every single song has been filmed in some capacity to be put into a video element. So yeah, there's going to be, that was another thing important with this also was having the audio, but having the visual accompaniment with all of the audio. So yeah, there's going to be visuals to everything. Was it hard selecting the cover songs for the project? Um, it wasn't hard. It was um, it was kind of nail biting in re regards to because once again we didn't do it exactly the same way that we did Smith and Myers the the first time. The fans picked all of that and and what have you. But the fans had a lot to do with submitting to us this time. Also, like what is a song that you would like to hear us do? So it was a there was a lot of songs. Um, why I say it was kind of nail biting was we just didn't want to feel like we skipped one that man I really wish we would have done this one but I, you know I know we have these 10 we've we said these are the 10 we're going to do but man I really wish we could have done this one what we had to basically do was look at these songs and to give people kind of a a, a window if you will into our process especially when it comes to the the covers that we chose we wanted to do, like I said earlier, really a reimagining of these songs because a lot of these songs that are the covers, some people will probably scratch their head a little bit when they see what the covers are, like the names of the songs. They'll know what the songs are. But it was really picking songs that focused on the lyrics and maybe some songs that like you've heard over the years where you're like, oh, that's a cool song, but you never really focused on the lyric or yeah, that's kind of a legendary song, but it's just, you wouldn't have known how intense and how poetic the lyrics in some of these songs were unless we brought them down to the way that we recorded them in our version of them to really put a lot of exposure on the story in these songs and why these songs are so important and why these songs are just great cinematic pieces of work that maybe you wouldn't have necessarily known had we not put them in the way done them the way that we did them okay so as far as the originals are concerned uh were they written specifically for this session are you grabbing bits and pieces from maybe other ideas from years past or tours past or is this something that is is solely for this project right now and you're kind of trying to keep it in the now does that make sense it's solely for this project right now okay so the 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 now remember though <clears throat> Seven of those 10 originals were written before we knew that there was a pandemic getting ready to happen. Um, and then these three other songs, uh, once we could reconvene with each other again, they were written during 
everything. Um, but I think more than like, we weren't borrowing from past projects and we weren't like, it wasn't one of those things where like we had something like on a voice memo from a couple of years ago, or what about this? What about that? The really cool thing about the original songs for Smith and Myers was that we wrote a song a day and recorded it on that day. So it was a bit of a challenge and make no mistake, we didn't phone anything in. It's just to be totally honest, it was such a different creative process because of the project. Because we look at Smith and Myers not as a band or a group. We consider Smith and Myers a duo because it's me and Zach. So it was more about, we just had a flood of creativity to be honest with you. So we were able to write a song a day and then record it that day. Excellent. So. Uh, the Smith & Myers show here in Philadelphia is going to be Thursday, September 3rd, WMMR's live-in drive-in concert event. When we made the announcement, your camp made the announcement at the same time. And to say the overall excitement was through the roof, I think, was an understatement at that point. And I have a feeling Shinedown Nation is going to be coming out in droves, and we're going to see license plates from all over the place in that parking lot that day. Yeah, and this is something else, too. Um, me and Zach are looking at the overall we're basically looking at the rest of this fundamental year. And so when the opportunity came to do this with MMR, first of all, it was a no brainer. Uh, but second of all, we really needed to make sure that we did it the right way. You know, we've been in complete communication um, with our team and your team there in Philly and everybody at MMR. We want to assure people that this is a safe environment for what we have to do right now that this is 100% safe. We've laid this out in the best way possible. Um, and, and we're gonna abide by the rules and we're gonna do what we need to do. Um, the station, I have to give you a tremendous amount of credit. You've just gone above and beyond in making sure that all of our people on our end have the tools that we need to come in and give everybody a wonderful experience. Um, is it traditional? Is it something that we've done before? No, but we're massively excited to be able to do it and couldn't, you know, couldn't be coming in this year to a city that we consider home, you know, to us and we consider family to be able to do this, um, this first event for us, you know, with Smith and Myers and be able to do it in Philadelphia. Um, it's going to be a wonderful night. It's going to be awesome to have everybody there. I know it's a bit unconventional, but this is what we need to do right now. But I really want people to know that we're taking all of the measures we need to take to ensure everyone's safety. And it's, it's going to be awesome. We're glad to be able to do it in Philly and kick it off that way. Yeah. The Philly fan base of shine down nation is pumped to say the least. You mentioned the deep dive tour. I actually had tickets for two of the Dallas shows down at the house of blues. Super yeah. bummed that that happened. I know. Of course it was supposed to be back in May. You moved it to August and all that kind of stuff. And then just kind of scrapped it. Um, any chance of that seeing the light of day down the line? I know you guys have a ton of other stuff now on the horizon with the film and s and 2 and, of course, the eventual Shinedown 7. Is, is that still tucked, like, on the back burner for now for maybe a, a future tour? I can go ahead and tell everybody right now that the Deep Dive Tour will 100% happen. Um, we're, like a lot of artists right now, we're trying to get the landscape of next year. We're trying to kind of fundamentally look and see how to do everything safely and how to do everything responsibly. But in answer to your question, um, we will eventually do the deep dive tour. As soon as we get a green light to be able to, to put that into motion, we, please know that we will do it immediately. So it's not something that we've scrapped from, you know, in the future. We will do it. Um, we just have to get a green light on it. Gotcha. Uh, speaking of live shows, you mentioned the uh, live show from London that you guys just released on Friday via YouTube. Any chance of that seeing a physical release? No, the, the thing about the London, the London performance was there were these questions of, you know, oh, we need to sell tickets for this and put it online and make it a big thing and do all this. And we were like, no, like, <laughs> we're not going to make people pay to see this. You know, not right now. That's ridiculous. Sure. Um, it just took us a long time to make sure that it was special because we had the show, we filmed the show, but with Sanjay, because our videographer Sanjay is the one who directed it and who did all of this. And it was, you know, six months of editing this to get those 56 minutes 
the way that they look. Um, and if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It's not just a kind of live performance. There's a, there's a, there's a bit more to it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that was something that we wanted to make sure that it was free for people, that they could watch it anytime they wanted to, you know, as long as you got a Wi-Fi or what have you. Um, but um, I mean, never say never. We may put it together in, in some form in the future to where you can have like a hard copy of it. Um, but for right now, man, we just wanted it to live, um, you know, on a format that you could see it and watch it anytime you wanted to. Well, shout out to Sean Sanjay. He's the man. If Dude, anybody he, has he worked so hard on this, man. He really, really put everything he had into it. You can see the bits and pieces of the uh, clips that he would put together that you guys would then entail post on your socials of mm -hmm. previous shows when you're out on tour doing that kind of thing. And I think he does an absolutely great job. The reason why I asked about the physical release, uh, we don't have a live shine down vinyl release. And I was wondering it's if true. Maybe that could be a possibility to add to the, to the arsenal. Well, the the good thing is that the the audio um, has been mixed and put together. We were very, very fortunate with that as well. We actually were able to bring in an incredible mixer, front of house engineer. Um, Johan Myers did the audio for Live in London. He's the front of house engineer for Gojira. And they just actually released a new song here recently, too. So we were able to get him to do the audio for this, and he did a fantastic job. And... Um, but uh, yeah, man, once again, never say never. I think that uh, that has the potential for uh, a possible physical future release. Yeah. Cool. Well, you mentioned the Shinedown movie. You've also been quoted as saying that this is a major motion picture. Uh, yeah. Curious to the status. You said, uh, obviously, all of this stuff, aside from Shinedown 7, is set for release before the end of this year. I was yeah. just wondering if it's closer to, to the now or... Any details or anything you can share with us on the uh, Shinedown movie? So I can give I can give you the details of we're probably, in my personal opinion, it's we've done multiple. It's first of all, it's the director is a gentleman by the name of Bill Yukich, and Bill Yukich was the sole director of every part of Attention Attention. So every single song has been filmed through his eyes. So but it's not like watching a major motion. It's not like watching a bunch of music videos. It's really difficult to explain it unless you see it, mm -hmm. um, which that's where the editing comes in with this. We've gone back and forth multiple times. I would say we're in about an 85% finished um, film because there's so much going into these segues and how this wraps. You know, we kind of borrow a little bit from Quentin Tarantino and kind of the Pulp Fiction mentality because there's a lot of like flashback sequences and then flash forward sequences. It's really heavy and it's really in depth how it's being done because there's actors and there's actresses that are in this as well that have dialogue. So there's all of these elements, but I wanna believe we're gonna be able to pull it off this year. The only thing that would slow it down from being pulled off this year is we are submitting it for film festivals. And the only thing that would slow it down is if there's three major film festivals that as of right now, they're clearing them for 2021, meaning they're gonna happen you know, with audiences. Um, there's three that are really, really important and we didn't miss the deadline on them. So the only thing that would slow it down from coming out this year is if we 100% get submitted into those film festivals then it would be more around you know january february of next year but i actually kind of have my fingers crossed that we're going to get um we're going to be accepted to these festivals but it's coming it's just like with anything man we got to make sure that it's you know that it's exactly the way we want to convey it and in our eyes that it's finished and it's ready to be presented to the world i think we started talking about this movie like two years ago. This must have been quite an undertaking for you guys. Yeah, because it's also one of the reasons why I call it a major motion picture because it really is a major motion picture. There were sequences in this movie where like we shut down four city blocks two days in a row in Los Angeles, California. And that is not an easy thing to do. And you know, like there's a lot of stunts 
involved in this movie. Um, there's just, I mean, a lot of the action that you see in the film too, from, you know, the four of us in the band, we did all of those stunts. Um, and there's just a level of, you know, it's got like a, it has very much a blockbuster layout and the way that we want to present it. Um, you know, we went for it, man. Excellent. Uh, I saw that you guys were doing a photo shoot out in LA not too long ago and you posted mm -hmm. some pictures up on your gram, I guess ahead of when Zach thought you were going to be presenting them or whatever. But yeah, I gotta say you look fly as hell, man. Pimping to say the least. <laughs> Well, thank you. I'm just trying to keep up with this architecture, with this beard that's going on here. Right. I feel underdressed right now. I wish I would have had mine out. <laughs> we'll I'm get saying, you a poor shirt. No, I, I'm, I'm looking at it all. I love it, man. <laughs> um, yeah, congratulations. Man, it's just, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and like, you, like you were saying too, man, it's just like with the Smith & Myers, it's a different thing, you know? And I know that we get up on stage, depending on how we feel in Shine Down for tour cycles, we're known for getting up, you know, being dressed up sometimes and then sometimes being dressed down and, and however you look at it. But Smith and Myers is, um, there's a brand, I guess you would say, involved with that. There's, there's kind of a classiness, there's a bar that's there um, because it's different, you know? And, uh, you know, we, we, we want people to, we, we, and we had this conversation in Shinedown, too. It's like, well, if you want to show up in jeans and a T-shirt on stage, then you're a jeans and a T-shirt act. Or you show up on stage and you're head to toe, you're locked in, you know what you're doing, you're presenting yourself in a very sophisticated way if that's the way that you want to do it. Um, you know, the proof is in the pudding and you get what you paid for. And the last thing that we want to do with anything when we present ourselves to the public is, you know, Sometimes you got to dress for success, man. You got to show up ready to throw down. Sure. Uh, I've noticed, uh, especially with the last couple of tours you guys have done, uh, everybody's wearing Shine Down t-shirts. That's something you picked up from Iron Maiden, I believe? Metallica, Iron Maiden, okay. Jesus Priest. Uh, <laughs> um, you might no, as well it, represent, man. Hell yeah, why not? Yeah, the, the thing is, is that 100% we noticed that when we were on tour with Iron Maiden, some people may not know this, but in 2017, we had an opportunity of a lifetime and we opened up for Iron Maiden for 44 dates. It was one of the greatest experiences we've ever had, you know, as a band to be with a band of that heritage and that caliber. And let me just say this about Iron Maiden, everybody from the band down to the crew, you're talking about a band that has been around for four decades and they are the most genuine, hardworking, so like very caring individuals, really just sweethearts in a lot of ways. They're just really wonderful people. There's a reason you see why they have this extraordinary fan base, why they have this extraordinary legacy. Um, they were just a joy to watch every single night and also just to learn from how they interact with each other, how they set up these tours, how they, tra they're a global band. You know, you're not talking about a band that's like really, really big in one territory. You're talking about a band that can go all over the world and sell out stadiums and do it on their own. They don't even need an opener. You know what I mean? Sure. And to be able to have gotten that opportunity with them, it was life changing. And you know, but I think we had respect from them also because we still showed up. They asked us to come and do that tour, which we were kind of beside ourselves in the first place. But we showed up with a hammer, too. You know what I mean? Like, they brought us out here to open the show, so bring it. You know what I mean? And, yeah, it was interesting to see them. You know, they wear their, their own band shirts. And I was like, man, I don't want to sometimes you're told like don't be that guy right. you know what i mean <laughs> don't be that guy or that girl don't wear your own band shirt and i'm like well jason newstead wore metallica shirts all the time when when he was with metallica iron maiden they wear their shirts all the time i mean Judas priest does the same thing and like i was like why not you know what i mean and the funny thing about it was when we did that we only did that for like a select amount i think we did that for about three and a half four months um, where we were wearing, we had wardrobe, but we were wearing our shirts that we were selling in merch. Also, dude, our merch sales, like 
those three months that we were doing that, I mean, just so everybody knows, you know, it is commerce, capitalism and working on, you know, selling your brand. That is part of what you're doing out there. Our merch numbers went up by like 45% when we were doing that. So, I mean, it's all in how you look at it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so congratulations on the success of Atlas Falls. What an amazing initiative taken on by you and your brothers in Shinedown uh, to benefit direct relief, helping those affected by poverty and disaster. I was wondering if you yeah. uh, what knew what, what the last tally was that you heard as far as fund raised, funds raised as far as that initiative is concerned. So right now where it's standing, we're getting some of the final numbers back, but um, it is approaching a half a million dollars. And I, I have to say that um, this is all because of you. And this is also because of Shinedown Nation, the fan base, the relationship with Terrestrial Radio, and the exposure of you know, giving the song a platform alongside of the fundraising of the t-shirt. Um, if people don't know, um, you know, you can order the Atlas Falls t-shirts and 100% of those proceeds go directly to Direct Relief. It's also important to know that that shirt will forever, the proceeds of that particular shirt when it's up for sale and the link is there, um, the money will for forever the money will, for that particular shirt, will always go to direct relief. Um, because the thing is, is that when the, pan when the pandemic began, I didn't know what COVID-19 was. I didn't understand coronavirus. I'd never heard of social distancing. And when I was diving into educating myself about everything that was going on and trying to figure out exactly what was going on, I came across direct relief. And I'd never heard of them. And direct relief was here before COVID-19. Direct relief will be here after. COVID-19, but their sole mission is to give the medical community and the scientific community the resources that they need during times of crisis, poverty, a natural disaster, a pandemic. Give these men and women on the ground the resources and the tools they need to save as many lives as possible. And when we reached out to them, it took us a minute for, for them to believe that it was actually us. And then when we finally got our liaison, Samir, at at Direct Relief, that's when we said, we wanna do everything that we possibly can to bring awareness to your organization. And, you know, by also putting Atlas Falls out there, I just saw how everybody was terrified at the beginning of this and scared and uncertain and just the fear. And my whole point of that was, we have to show confidence. We have to put something out that is a we have to put optimism out there. We have to give something and put something out into the universe that gives people hope. And I always knew the song would see the light of day. I didn't realize it was gonna to be to this capacity, but the fact of the matter is, I mean, just the efforts that not only yourself have done, the radio stations across the world have done, and just the fan base, you know, we are approaching a half a million dollars that we've raised for direct relief. And uh, we're gonna continue to raise money for direct relief, to make sure people that are aware of why direct relief is so important. Um, so really, I have to say thank you to just everybody that's involved and that have donated because uh, it, it means a great deal to us. And we're just very, very grateful to be a part of this. But all the glory goes to the fan base and to Terrestrial Radio and the direct relief, man. They're the ones doing the work. Sure. Well, shout out to you guys and Shine Down, of course. Shout out to Shine Down Nation. And speaking of Shine Down, you mentioned that you're in South Carolina with Eric. Yep. Uh, getting the preliminary stuff together for Shine Down Seven. Yep. What can you share with us about that? So there's three songs written so far. Um, we're we're working on number four. I can share with you this. We have talked about the last couple of albums. We're known for going in. And if you know anything about us in the last six albums, they, they don't sound like each other. We try to never make the same record twice. We try to not write the same song over and over again. Um, we're also known for making these records that are quite cinematic. There's a lot of layers. There's a lot of production. Um, they're, they're really, really intense. We have decided to keep each other accountable on this particular project for the next album. We really are gonna focus on drums, bass, guitar, vocals, 
and writing the most compelling songs that we can, but we're really trying to not focus on layering as much and stacking as much and using like some of these more off the wall uh, soundscapes that normally we would do. And look, if something is begging for something when we're writing a song, like a synth part or something of that nature, it just needs it. We're not gonna completely abandon it, but I think people should expect that we're going in here with the idea of making a record that is really, really rock and roll to the bone, but focusing on those instruments and those elements to where it is about vocals, drums, bass, guitar, writing the best songs that we can write and putting a lot of it up front in the mix, you know, not working as much with like effects and things of that nature, like just really focusing on making a, just the best rock record we can make. Is Eric going to be helming the producer role similar to Attention Detention? You know what? As of right now, there's no reason for him not to because, I mean, it, it really does, it kind of rests on him in regards to if he wants to take that on. Um, the last record, there was such a, um, the last record was, there was such a focus and we knew exactly what we were going to do. Um, it, you know, it evolved over time when we were in the studio, but it was, was really, really focused on all parties. And he was at the helm of all of that because with attention, attention, we brought one of our really good friends in to help engineer some of the drumming, Doug McKean, who was the engineer for the Sound of Madness record. And also he engineered Amaryllis. Um, we brought Doug in to work on some of the drumming, but the rest of it from the grunt work Eric was the main engineer. Eric was the main producer. Um, and, you know, he also mixed the album. So it's a lot to take on. Um, and so with this, I think more than anything, right now he's really focused on, he's having a lot of fun, which is good too. Like he's just enjoying being in there, just writing new material. Um, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Sure. No, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I know this is a, a loaded question here, but if you were Shine Down 7, when would you like to see yourself released to the world? I think that, um, I think you will probably hear the first single right around, because we were actually just talking about this the other day. Um, we want to try to have the rec. We want to try to have the album ready by July of next year. Okay. For the like when the album is actually released, so I think you'll start hearing. I think you should probably hear a new Shine Down track mid March. Okay. You know, cool. mid March, maybe early April, but uh, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking. All right. Uh, some social media handles that everybody should be following right now, of course, Mister at the Brent Smith right at the brent smith yep. at z myers official at smith and myers official and, and of course at shinedown uh your videos that you've been posting i don't want to say oh become... and also at at uh, for eric at evas prod okay so everybody knows prod. i follow him as well it's funny because he posted something a video i think it was on his instagram where i guess he hit a bit of a writer's block so he put the video up there of, he can't, can't seem to get out of whatever kind of mental uh, state he was in at that time and he decided yeah. to throw it up on uh, an Instagram there. Yeah. Uh, your videos though um, have are inspirational, have a bit of levity to it. There's a lot of love there. You tell everybody or you say, you know, no excuses. There's, there's motivation behind it. And, you know, it's you in the gym. It's you all sweaty and shaking and doing your thing. And, yeah. and uh, do you realize what those posts mean to all of us? Like, do you, do you get like inundated with all sorts of uh, responses and messages from Shinedown Nation being like, thank you. This is exactly what I needed right now. I've been going through so much, just hard troubles, hard times. And to see you smiling, saying, you know, get up, get after it, get out there, go do it. Like, I mean, I know how you make the Shinedown Nation feel from being such a diehard fan and sort of a, a voice and a representative for you guys, because I have so many people come to me and say, like, thank you for playing that song. Thank you for talking about Shine Down. Thank you for representing them, all that kind of stuff. So I feel the love and I feel the response from the Shine Down Nation. I can only imagine what it is for you. I mean, it, 
they um, and when I say they, I'm, I'm talking about the audience and, and, and the fan base. Um, they're a huge part of my life. They also keep me accountable too. one of the reasons why I do post a lot from the gym is I have those days, man, where I don't necessarily want to get in there and do it. But I know for a fact once I do it and it doesn't matter what time of the day I do it. It's just getting in there and doing it. I always feel stronger and I always feel better afterwards. Not only do I mentally feel stronger and more secure and locked in, but I physically, I just feel better. I always say like, man, just get through the first 10 minutes. You know what I mean? And then you're, you're off. And, you know, it's in answer to your question, though, like with the comments and do I know, I read every single comment. I am that guy. Like I will take time to sit um and and read what people are saying and i don't reply to everybody but there are moments when i do feel like um i want to reply to certain people and i'll reply to them um but it's just i've even before everything began with this virus and this pandemic and what we're all dealing with right now i saw the need and i have seen the need over the years don't be a part of the problem. Be a part of the solution. Figure out a way to compromise. You may not get exactly what you want, but there's a way to understand the other side of any situation. I've also, you know, I've often told people, I'm like, don't kneel to the wall. And, and, and what that means is that I've always said, if you have an obstacle in front of you, and I look at it like a brick wall, if you run headfirst into that brick wall, you'll probably lose. You can't do that all the time. I understand the angst, I understand the frustration that life can throw at you, but you have to figure out a way to negotiate with the wall or go over it or around it or under it. But the thing about it is, is that the negative aspect of life will always be there and they're in multiple different categories. It takes not as much energy to be a part of the bandwagon and jump on, you know, just being negative and being disrespectful and just complaining. There's a lot more effort in figuring out if there's a problem, how do we work together to figure out the solution to get to get through it. And, you know, it's one of the things the fan base, if they don't know this, um, they're a tremendous part of my mental my mental health you know what i mean like i take it really seriously you've known me for a long long time we're friends we've known each other and seen a lot of different landscapes change not only in the record industry the music business in radio just fundamentally you know we've known each other a long time it's how you navigate the situations life is going to keep the world will the world will continue to spin the reality is that you got to not get complacent and you have to also listen to people. You can't just close your ears sometimes because something is happening or someone's saying something that you don't want to hear. You've got to figure out a way to do your best to work with everybody around you to get to the other side. And what I'm seeing in the public now more than ever, I see how media treats certain things. But if you look out in the real world, in the real world, People are trying to pick each other up. People are trying to be there for each other. We're all on the same playing field right now. What we do as a society and what we do as a species, it matters. And we have to work with it. We have to work with one another and we should want to work with one another. And so, yeah, I mean, the fan base keeps me accountable and I have to keep myself accountable. But man, I'm just always trying to put optimism first. You ever think about doing a a motivational speaking tour or an engagement or a stream or something? I wholeheartedly mean that, man. I mean, just like just your your gym selfie videos that you do there are enough to get people out of a funk or out of a out of a dark period, even if for that moment. But obviously, you have a ton of stuff on your plate, and there's going to continue to be the case. But I think you would be perfect, even if it was a, a digital series. Or, or something that you actually did in person that I think people would really listen to you and kind of wrap their heads around your ideas and, and your voice and your speaking. You know what, um, I think that 
as long as I could put 100% of my energy into it, um, it would be something that I would look at. Um, but there is, um, there's a lot of responsibility that goes with something like that because, you know, it's an interesting thought process, but you have to really, really maintain, you have to be on all the time. And you have to really, really focus on how people, and I kind of, I guess in some ways, it's, it's one of the reasons, if I'm good at being a public speaker, it's because, um, it's because I know what it feels like to be put down. And it's because I know what it feels like to be bullied mentally and physically. It's because I know what it feels like to have people point at you and laugh or think that you're not capable of doing something, even though you're trying to better yourself. And it's that confusion sometimes of like, I didn't do anything to this person. Why are they beating me up? Just because I have an opinion about something or maybe I want something more for my life. And when I was a kid, man, my dad, I'll never forget it. I got picked on a lot in grade school. You know, I was not the most attractive child. So the thing is, is that my dad, I'll never forget it. When I was 10 years old, he took me out into the garage. He did not put boxing gloves on me or anything. He just wrapped my hands in tape. And he's like, I'm not going to teach you the offense. I'm going to teach you the defense. And that was really interesting, man, because he would always tell me, like, look, son, you're going to have to fight for yourself. Sometimes mentally, you're going to have to fight for yourself. You're going to have to fight for yourself physically, too, sometimes. Because if somebody's coming up in your world and they're getting into your space, your personal space, and they're attacking you, sometimes you have no choice but to attack them back you know, and you have to stand your ground. And the reason I bring that up is that because I'm in a band that we know how that feels to be put down. We know how it feels to be told that there's no way you can achieve all these things that you have that you want to achieve. There's, you're never going to do it. Well, that's not for that person to decide. That's for you to decide. And that's what I want people, that's what I want to arm people with, is the fact that as long as you have the will and you have the fight in you, whatever you want for yourself, for your family, for your own life, there's not anything that you can't achieve. I know this because I'm living proof of it. But in the same breath of that, you can't ever get complacent. You can't ever, you can't ever show up and think to yourself, I've arrived. Because if that's the case, then... And if you feel like that, then maybe it's time for you to um, be comfortable in, in that, that frame of mind. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the reality is that I want to give people, I want to make sure people truly do know that they're necessary, that they do have purpose and their life has meaning. And um, I will continue to do that every single day that I have air in my lungs. Well, on behalf of Shinedown Nation and myself, thank you. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the levity. At the Brent Smith uh, on Instagram is a, is a great follow. It's, it's good stuff. If anything else, you get to watch, watch you do your laundry <laughs> when you don't want to be doing your laundry. <laughs> uh, one last question for you here, sort of off the cuff. Uh, I've noticed over the years when you sign autographs, I have a whole bunch of them from you. Um, more recently or on the latter half of, of your career, you'd sign your name and then you'd put three exclamation marks on the end. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, it's, um, it's just something, it's kind of funny because I have a loud speaking voice anyway. <laughs> <laughs> when, and a lot of that comes from the fact that like, like when I was coming up, I was, I was 14 years old going into clubs where you needed to be 21 because I had a fake ID, but I wanted to perform. So like I would be in these bands, 18, you know, I needed to be 18, I needed to be 21, but I had a fake ID that says I was, you know, 18 or what have you. Um, and I could get in the door because I was performing at like 14 years old. Well, they had, you know, the monitors and everything else back in the day, they were crap. So like you have these wall of amplifiers on 11, you had to learn how to sing loud, you know what I mean? And 
that's probably why I have such a loud speaking voice. Um, so the exclamation points, it's, it's kind of a, a tongue in cheek thing um, with me and the guys in the band because <laughs> Zach will always be like, you don't ever have to worry where Brent is because you can hear him three towns over. <laughs> like it's, you know, like when we're in arenas or like if we're backstage or something like that, like it's not hard to find me, you can hear me. And they would always make a joke, like I would come into rooms and stuff and I would just, you know, start talking and they'd just be like, dude, I'm right here. Like, <laughs> you know, we don't, so I kind of took it as this, um, I always thought it was funny because, you know, uh, you know, I would write my name and whatever, do my autograph and what have you. And, you know, over time it became like this running joke, like, you know, you never can miss Brent. You can hear him, you know, two streets over. So I just started writing my name and then throwing three exclamation points like I was yelling my name, I guess you would say. <laughs> gotcha. So there's, right not, there's not like some kind of like mysteriousness to it or anything. It's more just kind of silly and being fun with it. Okay, because obviously with attention, attention, the exclamation mark has a more prominent role with, with the new album and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. I have stuff going back to Sound of Madness autographs that have the, the exclamation marks on it. So it's been with you for quite some time now. The, the funny thing too with it also is that it started off originally with one exclamation point and then I would write and th th they're hard to find the ones that it's kind of weird man because there's people on eBay there's a few signatures where I'm, I've signed it but I only have one exclamation mark mm -hmm. there's a couple where I only have two um, and the funny thing is is people are trying to sell these things for like astronomical amounts of money right and the funny thing was is that I recall like I remember the first time I did an exclamation point. Then I remember I was like, oh, I'll do two. And then I did, and I've just stuck with three ever since. Eventually there'll be 10. It'll just be me, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. You know, it'll be, yeah. Who knows what'll happen? But yeah, it's just, uh, it was just something fun. Excellent. Well, Brent, as always, marvelous chatting with you, man. We are beyond excited, stoked, pumped for the Smith & Myers show. Our live we are too. Drive -in. That's going to be on Thursday night, September 3rd, outside in the parking lot of Citizens Bank Park. Tickets are on sale now, WMMR.com. You can also go to Shinedown.com for some more. Dude, we're looking forward to it. First show back, MMR concert event. Philadelphia is ready for you, man. We're extremely ready for Philadelphia, too. We're very, very excited about this. And, I mean, here's the other thing, too, man. It's a first for us. You know, we've never done anything like this. Um, but we're doing everything that we need to do to ensure that it's going to be a great night. Everything's going to go off without a hitch. Everyone's going to be safe. Everyone's going to be you know, in good spirits. We're going to have a blast, man. It's going to be super fun. Sweet. Thanks so much for chatting with us here at WMMR. We're looking forward to Smith & Myers 2 coming out at some point, hopefully soon. Close. 10 days away. 10 days away. We're going to get some more information on that. And Brent, my friend, we'll see you and your brother Zach in September. Thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate you so, so much. Be good. Be safe. Be healthy. Can't wait to see you. Much love to Philly. Much love to MMR. And uh, love you guys and girls. We'll see you soon.